Hello, this is Lydia, the lifestyle coach, coming to you with another live feed. Hello, group, how are you doing? Um, it's been a crazy but really fun day. So I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning and I drove five hours to get back to my hometown. And I'm here for like a second doing a live feed for you. And then I'm gonna scoop up my little girl and we're gonna get on a plane and then we're gonna go on a cruise and then we're gonna go to Cuba. And it's gonna be so fun. So today is a fun day. And I'm glad that we're getting to just pop in real quick to talk about part five. So for those of you who are new in the group, welcome. So happy that you're here. Hope you feel very, very welcome. So there is a whole mix of us here. So some of you don't know who I am. Hello, I'm Lydia, the lifestyle coach. And I help people to get completely free from food crazies like binge eating, bulimia, overeating without using therapy or diets or medications using just your own brain. So that's what we do here. So those of you who don't know, now you know. And Oh, hi, Lori. Hello. <laughs> so fun to see you guys pop on. And feel free to, like, make comments or ask questions or I think you can, like, send hearts. You can never have too many hearts in your life. That's cool. Or, like, little likes or whatever um, before we do our live feed. But we're doing a series right now um, about debunking diets and so excited to come to you with another little chapter um, with what we're talking about here. But just wanted to talk about sort of the mix in the group. Oh, a heart. Thanks, TJ, for the heart. That's so fun. And Lori. Oh, so many hearts. So... Some of us are just like, hey, this looks like a cool group. Awesome. We're so happy that you're here. This is an amazing environment where we're just using our own brains, our own minds to just be free. And when I talk about free, I'm not talking about managing your eating disorder. I'm not talking about this identity of like, oh, well, I'm a binge eater and I, that's my disease and that's what I'll always be. I used to think that too. I was bulimic for years and years and years. And I am a completely normal eater now. So it's not about managing your eating disorder. It's about not having having one anymore. Like you're going back to this place of normal eating and you can fix your brain for good where you're not haunted by food anymore for the rest of your life. It's awesome and so very possible. We've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women just get free from their what I call food shoes, so food issues. So some of you are just new to this, which is great, welcome. Some of you are a little bit along the journey, right? Like you've seen my videos, you have the ebook, you've been part of the group, and you're on your, your journey working this out, which is great, we wanna support you in that way. Some of you guys I've worked with. Some of you guys, I just you know had a woman graduate from the program. She was bulimic for 33 years. So it was wrecking her life and she's just done now and she's free. Awesome. There was another woman who just a little while ago was a binge eater for 25 years. Now she's just done. So we also have, you know, those in the group who have really, I mean, we've worked together and they have complete freedom. And so you'll see like they're just, you know, stuff pop up. And so they're a great resource as well. So if you guys have questions or if you're struggling, feel free to send me a message. And yeah, absolutely. Oh, Lori, I love how you said that. Breaking the habit. Absolutely. So really with what we're doing here, it's using your own brain and that's it with a habit-based approach. So not thinking of this as a disease and not thinking of this as an identity and not thinking of this as an addiction. These are all ways that I used to think of it too. But when we shift our perspective, we just say, oh, I just have a bad habit and I can break that habit. Okay. Awesome. In fact, I have a video that says if binging or smoking, and it's about how, I mean, quitting smoking, people are like, oh yeah, I just quit smoking and I'm not a smoker anymore. It's that same sort of vibe with this, like, oh, I just quit binge eating and I'm not a binge eater anymore. Okay. Awesome. There we go. But as we're on this journey, there are things that will keep you in the cycle, that will fight against your freedom and your recovery. And a lot of times it's looked at as the very solution. So the very thing that the world would say, you know, conventional wisdom would say, oh, this is the cure for your binge eating is the thing that actually makes it worse. The number one cause of eating disorders is dieting. That restriction, mental deprivation and physical deprivation, the number one cause. And guess what? We are sent to and told, oh, well, if you just do this diet now, this is going to be the answer. And I mean, for so many women that I coach, it has been 25, 35 years that they've been doing the next diet and the next diet and the next diet. So just ask yourself, has that ever fixed your relationship with food? 
has a diet ever permanently fixed your relationship with food? Because sometimes you think like, oh yeah, I went on this diet and I didn't binge for the whole time I was on the diet. Okay, what did your eating look like the second you were done? Or the second that you fell off the wagon, right? That's what we're talking about today. So in our debunking diets series, we're talking about in part five today, how dieting destroys your relationship with food. No fun, no fun at all. So how this works is for some of us, I mean, we don't have memories of this. For a lot of us, I mean, like we've been binge eating or bulimic or, you know, overeaters or distorted, you know, relationship with food, like since we were little kids. So we don't remember it being another way. But some of us can remember when food just wasn't a big deal. And I promise you that all of you were born with food not being a big deal. I mean, it was a big deal as in like, you die if you don't eat. But it wasn't like this sort of like ob obsessive, distorted, taking up all your mental bandwidth, can't think about anything else sort of situation. So, I mean, for example, you went out for ice cream as a kid, but then you like started playing and it got all melted. So you just moved on with your day and left the rest of your ice cream. Or when we went out to eat with friends and you just got a burger and didn't think twice about it. And when your friends just took some of your fries off your plate and you didn't notice because you were fine sharing, you weren't going to eat all those anyway. So what happened? Why do you feel panicky just when I tell you the hypothetical fry situation. Oh my goodness, if I would have heard somebody tell me that just little statement back when I was in my crazy days with food, I would have like physiologically gotten uncomfortable. Like the idea of somebody stealing my fries, taking my food, taking what was mine, I would have just like flipped out. So even in that hypothetical situation, like what about that makes us feel uncomfortable? Why do you remember everything that you ate this past week and how many calories it had? And why can't you keep a chocolate bar in the cupboard for more than a day without feeling like it's calling your name? And the only way to make it stop is to just eat it all. So dieting destroys your relationship with food. And here's how. Number one, you start out feeling just neutral about food. Number two, you go on a diet and you cut something out, let's say sugar. And if you guys have like experiences like this that you wanna share, feel free to put them in the, the, the chat here. Um, even if you're watching the playback or if you've had like the same you know feelings come up with dieting, like let us know. Yeah, oh my goodness, Allison, I love that. She's saying I was a normal eater till I started restrictive dieting. That was 100% the cause of my starting to binge eat. Amen, sister. Amen. And a lot of us don't even realize that, right? I had no idea that my dieting was creating an eating disorder for myself. So I just thought, I have no willpower. There's something wrong with me. I just got to diet harder and diet righter and diet stronger and diet with more conviction. And then my eating disorder started getting worse and worse. So, well, now I have to diet even harder. Like, do you see this horrible cycle? So like, let it be known, you guys. Just the fact that you know that is so important. There are so many women in this world that have no idea why their eating disorder started and they think it was like connected with weakness in their past or not being able to deal with their issues. So it's like just the fact that you know that it was dieting that created this is a big deal. Be grateful for that step because that means that you can move forward and you can move on. All right, so number two, you cut something out, you go on a diet, let's say for instance, sugar. Number three, all of a sudden, sugar seems way more appealing and you think about it a lot. You think of all the things you'll have once you can have sugar again. Number four, you have sugar and it's amazing and you have way more sugar than you would have in the past because you can't keep going like this. Like you won't eat sugar tomorrow so you better get it all in now. Then five, you are terrified because you see that you have no control around sugar. Number six, you probably are gaining weight now because of all that sugar. Number seven, so you restrict some more to make up for it. Now it's not sugar. Oh, now it's not sugar and no bread. Okay, so number eight, now you think about sugar and bread. And then one night you have a whole loaf of bread with Nutella on it. And you think, I have no control over sugar or bread. Do you see how this stacks up, you guys? So... 
Number one, you're freaked out about more and more foods. Number two, and you binge on those very foods you said you would never eat. Number three, and now it's a moral issue. It isn't just bread, it was a promise to yourself. It was a moral choice. And number four, because there's no way that you can commit such a sin again, you must keep your promise this time. So tonight will be your one last binge. How many last binges have you had? Do you see how dieting actually ruins your relationship with food? So what you need to do is to get back to that place where food is a non-moral issue. This is something for you guys who have seen, you know, the interviews with the graduates of my program. Like, that's a huge thing, is taking the morality out of food. So it's more than just letting go of physical deprivation. It's about letting go of mental and emotional deprivation about these different foods. It's all a thought pattern, and you can interrupt that at any piece of the cycle and get free. So if you guys want help on the steps to do that and the first step to your recovery and just getting that solid, um, we should still have some openings. I think we still have a couple this week. Um, if you go to lydiawenty.com slash apply um, and you can snag a spot for a free 45 minute session please only sign up for this if being done with your binge eating your bulimia your overeating your food crazies please only sign up if that's a huge priority in your life this isn't for those who are just trying to diet better or you know like oh this is kind of annoying but this is for those who are like yeah I, this has to end like I am so done with this. I am so frustrated. This is wrecking my life. Like, I want to be done and get my life back. That's who these sessions are for. So this group is a wonderful support. But if you are serious about getting done, we are happy to help you with that first step. And you can pop over and get a free 45-minute session. So LydiaWenty.com slash apply. And so fun to pop in and see you guys. And now I'm going to go to Cuba. So goodbye. Mwah.